G'day guys and welcome back to me lab. Now in this video we're going to be having a bit of a look at the Wheel of Time ARPG I've been working on in Godot 4. So if you are interested in the world of the Wheel of Time, if you are interested in Godot 4, if you are interested in game development in general, hopefully there's something in this video that you will enjoy and hopefully if you see something in here that um, you can help me with if you're like uh, he's doing that a really stupid way I've got a better way of doing it please let me know because the whole point of this is for me to learn more about Godot 4 so I can better help my own students so anything you see that I'm doing wrong please let me know and I will definitely change it thanks guys let's jump into Godot and have a look at what we've been up to now if you are a Wheel of Time fan you automatically recognize what this is on the screen this is the map of Randland that has been in every paperback since 1992 or whenever the first one came out right so what I've done is I've just thrown this in as a sprite 2d to use it as a, a reference image so I've just given it the texture of this map and then we can just mess around with our Z index to, to place it and draw over it and stuff like that which which is exactly what I did so to show you what I've done let's uh, reduce our Z index over here so now you've got all of the mountains and all the forests that were laid out on that map. Uh, it's not perfect, but I've done my best. Um, and if we go back another one, now you'll see we've got all of our grass, all of our rivers, and Jesus, there's a lot of rivers in Randland, um, and all of our paths as well. And all of that's been done um, with freely available sprites on itch.io. Um, which has been fantastic. I think uh, the ones I'm using here are called, I'll put links in, but uh, I think it's the mini world sprites or something like that, but I'll put links so you can have a look as well. Um, so we've tried to make sure that all of our rivers and things have got all the right sort of um, edges and things. So it's not just, you know, basic block colors, but rather we've tried to give it a little bit of detail. Um, and what Rand is gonna be able to do is explore this world, starting in the two rivers here, right? We've got Taran Ferry up the top, we got Watch Hill, Devon Ride, Emmons Field in the middle with the wine spring water coming out of it. We've got the Althor Farm over there, right? So I'm just trying to paint a map as close as I can to how it looks in uh, the Wheel of Time books. Um, and then obviously I've got to take a fair bit of liberties as well because I'm not, you know, the best coder in the world. The whole point of this is for me to learn. So what I've actually probably spent the most time on this week frustratingly is working out the logic so that when I go into one of those other buildings, like go into the farm, um, when I come back out, I want to come back out next to the farm that I just went into. It actually took me a surprisingly long time to sort that out. Um, and I can show you what I did uh, in the scripts, but it was basically some global variables for start locations and, and stuff like that. Um, all right, why don't we jump in and have a play and um, I'll show you some of the features that we've, we've built into it. Here we are in Randland. So here's Rand, he's got his red hair, his red coat. Um, we're out front of the Elthor, Elthor farm. There's Emmons Field over there and the wine spring water coming out. Um, down there is Devon Ride, up there's Watch Hill, etc. So let's have a little bit of a move around. So like I said, some of the things I've been working on um, was to do with those transitions, but I've also implemented a dialogue system as well using the wonderful plugin that Nathan Hode has made available for free in the asset library. So I'll make sure that um, I leave whatever links and things you need to his channel to learn more about um, his dialogue system. It's an amazing thing that he's made freely available for everyone. Um, so yeah, dialogue, we can go and we can talk to Tam, right? So um, I'll show you how the dialogue works in a minute, but you can just see we get this dialogue box down the bottom um, and we can have a conversation. We can have various different things that we say, which will trigger different things that the, the NPC will say and things like that. So telling Tam um, that we'll look after his sword and stuff like that. Um, let's go grab the sword. Now we've got the sword, we actually can use it to fight. Before you grab the sword, that's all disabled. But once we've got it, we can hit spacebar, make a little grunt and swing our sword around. Now, when we exit, we come out in front of the farm. And here's the bit that actually, for some reason, I struggle with. When we go into the wine spring, when I come back out, now we come out in front of the wine spring in instead of back over here in our start location. That took me a surprising amount of effort, but I'll show you what I did. So let's go back in here. We've also got um, the scale of this inn is well out. I need to fix it. But we've also got Bran over here. We can go and have a conversation with Bran Alvia if we want to. Um, so hi, Rand. Is everything all right on the farm? How's your father? He's not happy. He can't come with me, but he's fine. So this is all basically drawn from the books, but you know, a little bit of creative license. And then he tells me to grab some food and head off to Tarvalon. So we're, we're trying to keep the crux of the story there, but we've got to tweak it around the edges because I cannot make 
a million cutscenes. Right, so there we've got our dialogue system. We can pick things up. We've now got an attack system sorted out that's um, all integrated into picking that sword up. We can exit scenes and we come out at the appropriate position rather than just at random locations. Um, yeah, so that's what we've got so far. Let's just do a bit of a, a quick run around. Here we go, Taran Ferry. I've put in a bridge rather than the ferry because I don't know how to do a ferry just yet, but I'll get there. Um, we can follow the road up to Bellon. We can keep going. Um, we'll get to Whitebridge eventually, right? Um, da -da -da. So I've had a lot of fun making this map. There's Whitebridge. Look at how white that bridge is. I'll try and work out ways to make these things more uh, book accurate, but for now, it's just to give you the idea. So we can um, go all the way to Camelin if we want to. Um, I think that's four kings there, maybe. I should put another house there to make it look more appropriate. And there's Camelin. So if we exit out and actually just zoom around the map, I think that might be a bit more edifying. So let's zoom ourselves out of the map so you can get a really good picture of what we've got. Caroline grass up there, which looks a bit deserty. I might tweak that. We've got the blight. You've got Jan um, the, the, the Tarwin's Gap over there. You've got the Jangai Pass over here. There will be Aiel eventually. Um, all the main cities and and major towns I've put on there too. I haven't coded all of that yet. Um, but yeah, we've got the bare bones now of what will be, um, I think, a really fun way for me to learn more about Godot 4, um, as well as, you know, for you guys to follow along. And like I've said before, if you like The Wheel of Time and you are interested in Godot 4 and that, I am, once I get this to a slightly better level, I'm just going to throw this on my GitHub so anyone can grab it, change it, play around with it themselves. Um, so again, if you've got any ideas for how I can make this better, if you know a better way of doing some of the things that I've been doing, please let me know because the whole point of this is to A, have fun and B, learn some things. And that's why I've got no dramas making this available in a little while when it's a little bit more polished. Um, it certainly won't be a commercial project. I've said before, this is purely for learning. There is no money involved in this. Please don't come after me, Amazon or the Jordan Estate. All right, so let's have a quick look at some of our code so you can see some of those things that I've been working on. So let's jump into our scripts. Um, what I want to do first is go to our, globals, uh, our global script. So in my global script, we're extending our node, but we've got a bunch of variables here. Actually, that one doesn't even need to exist anymore. Um, let's get rid of that one. Um, player health has sword, so that's when we're picking our sword up. Has provisions, I haven't actually coded those provisions yet, but that's when we go and see Bran Elvia. He's going to um, give us some provisions. The reason I'm putting these variables in here is not only for knowing if we pick something up, but it's also for controlling some of that dialogue. So we need some way of the dialogue manager knowing whether we've picked something up or whatever because it changes our dialogue, um, what, what is said. So we need a variable to use for that and I'll show you that in a bit. So we've got our sword, provisions, current scene. So this is for handling which scene we're in and how, do we, how we transfer between them. And then I've made a bunch of um, coordinates for where I want the player to appear when they exit certain buildings. Now this is a bit cumbersome, I will admit. Um, it means I'm going to have to do this for every single scene. Um, and given the scope of the game, that could get really, really clunky. So I did notice, uh, I talked about Nathan Hoag before. He's got that dialogue manager. He has made a video that it appears he's made a manager for scene transitions as well, but he hasn't made that one available yet. If he does, I will be the first one in line because it would make this sort of thing so much easier than what I'm doing here. Anyway, so we've got our variables there to help me navigate in and out of scenes, start origin, just so we know whether or not it's the first time we're starting the game, um, and our modify health. So that's the total totality of our global script. Let's have a look at our overworld now, right? So this is where those functions, uh, sorry, so I've made a bunch of um, functions in here that are attached to some area 2Ds, um, and that's how we're managing going into and coming out of scenes. So if you have a bit, we'll go at the top. So we're saying we're our, our overworld is our current scene. We're currently not changing scenes. Um, in here is how we're going to work out where our player starts. So if global start origin is true, so if the game booting up for the first time is true, we want to set our position X and Y to, um, I've just set in here the global, the, the L4 farm because it's near enough, right? Um, I'm going to change that later on, but at the moment it's just for the L4 farm. If, however, our current scene is the wine spring in, then we want to set our X and Y to where we exit from the wine spring and the L4 farm. So there's going to be a hell of a long list there. Again, if there's a better way, please let me know because I'm going to end up with some enormous scripts the way I'm going. Um, yeah, and then we look at those um, Area 2D um, signals and things like that. 
So just saying what scene we want to load up and um, what the node is. So we want tile map player in this particular scene um, for each of them. So that's our scene transitions, basically. Um, let's have a look at the dialogue manager. So you can see up the top here, I've got a whole new box dialogue. So this is all to do with that plugin from Nathan Toad. So we can have a look at um, our scripts. So let's look at, say, the TAM one. Uh, let's find our way over here. So this one is um, called TAM. So this little squiggle and TAM, that uh, is helping us know which file we want to run and what starting point we want to start at when we run that file. So this one is called TAM sword um, and we're starting at TAM. And now we're saying here, if global has sword equals false, so that variable that we had in our global script, then TAM's going to talk to me and tell me to get his sword. If, however, I've already got the sword, then he's just going to tell me to get on my way. So we can use our variables to change what's happening in our dialogue, which I think is really important in a role-playing game because it's all about the story, right? So that's um, just a really easy way of doing dialogue, and I'm so thankful that there are people out there that make these things, these plugins and things available for us, right? It's one of the beautiful things about Godot. And if, uh, if you're switching from Unity because of the changes they've just made, we have a fantastic community. All right, so get into Godot. It is free. It is well supported. Um, yeah, I know there's a lot of kerfuffle at the moment with some of the other engines and changes they're making. Let's cross our fingers that Godot don't go down the same path, right? All right, so that's our, our dialogue. I've showed you some of that scene transition stuff. I think that's all we need to go over for today. So let's jump back into our world. I think that's a pretty decent start. Like I said, I'm not a bloody game developer. This is all new to me as well. I know a few things. I teach digital tech, but I want to learn heaps more. So please let me know if you've got some tips for me because this is all about the learning journey, not the destination of a complete game. I will get this up on GitHub soon. I'll give you guys a link and you can have a bit of a play with it yourself. Thanks very much for watching. If you are keen on Wheel of Time, if you are keen on learning Godot, follow along um what is it everyone says like and subscribe whatever i don't really care um but just let's have a bit of fun and, and learn some stuff together thanks very much for watching guys and i'll see you next time